What are the Biblical secrets of a long and happy marriage? Well, firstly, you need to recognize that you will fight. Often. So, fight well. Now, where, you think, do I get that from in the Bible? Well, it seems to me that you can't talk about marriage in the Bible without going back to Genesis chapters 1 and 2. But most of us stop there, and we shouldn't. Because if we read on into Genesis 3, we discover very quickly that our world is broken. Broken because of human sin and sinfulness. And because our world is broken, we will fight in marriage. We're told in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. It's the first time in the Bible that notions of one human ruling over or dominating another come to the surface. And that's what happens in marriage. Because both partners in every marriage are human, and because all humans are sinful, we will try to control, to dominate. And when we do, it's the other partner's duty to resist. Because of the total depravity or radical corruption, or whatever you want to call it, of humankind, of the world in which we live, fighting in marriage is inevitable. Without it, one of us becomes a doormat. But that's where the second part of my little bit of advice comes in. Though you'll fight often, fight well. Because in any human relationship, if one person wins, both lose. Because the relationship breaks. Not instantly, but sooner or later. So when you fight, make sure you don't win. When you fight, make sure that you make peace. Again, not instantly, but soon. Now, that may or may not make your list of biblical advice for a long and happy marriage. I hope the rest of this little video will make your list. You see, marriage is a partnership, according to the Bible, where both get fulfilled. And by fulfilled, I mean, just like I mean elsewhere in these podcasts, filled out, filled up, f completed. In marriage, both partners get fulfilled. It's strong, strongly clear in Genesis chapter 2. In verse 18, God notices that having created one single human being, there is a problem. It's not good for the man to be alone. And then in verse 23, the man finally recognizes his other half, his partner. This at last, he says, is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man, and there's a pun in the Hebrew as well, this one was taken. Marriage is a partnership where both get fulfilled. It's not about the kind of fulfillment that our world talks so much about, about your every desire, your every wish being met. But it is about fulfillment, being completed, being filled up. And one of the mechanisms that God has built into the world for this, one of the means of grace in this world, is marriage. The partnership of man and woman completing each other. But it's more than that. Marriage is also spiritual. You see, in marriage, we become, like we do in many other parts of life, but for the moment let's focus on marriage, we become reflections of the very Godhead. That's what we are called to be, remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. It's in our relationship, our relationship of difference and equality, that we reflect the very nature of God. 
at least with the Christian God, who is three and one in difference and equality. And you see, it's not just in Genesis chapter 1 that we find this. It's also at the end of chapter 2. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. It's that unity and difference which reflects the nature of God and which allows us to reach our full potential. That's a Christian theology for a long and happy marriage. May God bless you. Amen.